Welcome back, guys and girls. The harmonica plays, which means that it's time to go down to Central and check out what's going on. So let's set our location. <laughs> With the nice hobo music. And go do some interrogations. Main, main, main house. Central Station. Rusty, please come with me this time. I don't want to leave you behind and have you get angry at that shotgun of yours. Finbar, let's go. Back to Central. Come on. The husband has an alibi, no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi checks out. Bates is a recidivist. He'll be pulling the same stick until we put him away for good. Ackerman has history, opportunity, hard evidence. What motive? We have the evidence. We know she was here. All we need is a confession. We can charge the bum with murder. I agree, Rusty. I think that's the right course of action. But again, what is his motive? Like, there's got to be some setup, like with the, you know, with the, with the Black Dahlia killer that's like forcing these people to do it or convincing them to do it or something. They all seem a little bit loopy in the head slightly. So, oh, Central is very close. Apparently, we're already here. Already back at Central. Central Police Station at 5.20 p.m. It's still very dark. This this could be a 5.20 p.m. I don't know about 3 p.m. No. Hello? Rusty? Ackerman, you were in the Marines. How do you know? The Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government puts weight like that on a man's shoulders? You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? Hmm, not quite, Russ. You're just trying to be a little bit considerate. Tell us about your contact with the victim. A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrelson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. Sure you do. Sure you do, sure you do. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We don't really have anything about... about that. Um, so let's doubt you. You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed. But I've killed many of them. Their necks are so fragile. This guy's a creeper. Where were you around 2 a.m. last night? At the camp. Maybe up on the hill? You have an alibi? Someone reliable. Someone who will be around on the day of the trial. Fuck your trial. The capitalist system needs another victim from amongst the masses. So be it. You're very angry, sir. Tell us why you killed her. Why did you kill Mrs. Terrelson? I have no recollection of the people I have killed. I'm doubting everything you say, you jerk. You hate women, Ackerman. More than you could ever imagine. How much did you hate Mrs. Terrelson? I ache to put my seed in them. Afterwards, I have no use for them. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrelson. A man down on his luck I can abide. But a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Maybe poor three of Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. And a grand result you have brought me. You two are fast becoming my finest crusaders. All right. 17 for 17, 15 for 17, quite a bit of vehicle damage, quite a bit of, uh, city damage, so it's only distinguished. The Charleston's might have justice if Stuart Ackerman is pronounced fit to stand trial. 
And that will wrap this case up, but it's such a short episode that we're going to start the next one. So let's get right to it. I'm surprised it was such a quick, uh, quick little ending there. Just, boop, wrapped up so nicely. we will look into it. Yes, I'm aware that it's an election year. Keep a hold of your hat, Counselor. Now is not the time to lose your nerve. It would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring and matching engagement ring. Sound familiar? Dear Muller. Press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out. The address is 348 South Main Street. The Muller case goes before the grand jury next week, and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. A 40-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. Lovely. More dead women. Friend. What is going on in this city? It's almost like the Black Dahlia is a group, like an organization of women-hating psychopaths. Body and Deirdre Muller's ring. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. Exactly. Did you get that book of riddles shoved up your ass, folks? Is that what your old man paid college tuition for? Hmm. So apparently, the, uh, the ring of Deirdre Moller was... showed up. Personal effects belonging to one Deirdre Moller were recently pawned for cash, and it sounds as though the DA is deaf that something be done before the story hits the newspapers. Deidre Moeller, and didn't we, uh, didn't we in that one bag Mr. Hugo Moeller? We did, the husband, and now he's selling off her stuff? Weird. All right, well, let's head that way and check out what's going on, Pawn Broker. Globe Loan and Jewelry. All right, here we go. Let's go, Russ. Russ the champ. Finbar the champ. At least it's sunny here in Los Angeles, finally. Cola King loves the sun. I love the sun. Day of nice weather after that gloomy last case. Will do us some good, I'm sure. Let's get going, Russ. You've got to admit, this is looking odd. Yeah, anyone could pawn it. Like if you take it along with all of the other indicators. Cole, Hugo Moeller was identified by the school's ground team. He's our guy. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He ran, for God's sake. And he always maintained he was set up. Hmm. That's what I was talking about. Some setup. Some setup thing. And now the Black Dahlia is secretly. Secretly selling the stuff, but how do you explain the last two? The fruit market guy and then the hobo guy. The hobo guy was clearly the killer, so I don't know. Maybe the bad guy has, has like partners in crime that he sets up and helps or pays. I don't know. Pawnbroker, 1021 a.m. Gold chains and rings, we pay good money. Let's see what you pay. How can I help you, boys? Where you at, buddy? Hello? Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? I gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? 50 bucks. Try another number. 20? Try 10. Feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. Hmm, let's check them out. So look at him. Look and see. What's this mark here? Maker's mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Hmm. Thanks for the tip. What about this one? Does this mark mean anything? All mark. Gives you an idea of the quality. Now, how would they have got this tip? How would they have known her stuff showed up? Like, they have, like, secret spies at the jewelry store, the pawnbroker, like, hey, this ring belongs to somebody. Like, how would they know that? I have no idea. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? He goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. 15 Poland Street, London, Tulare County. 
Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? I'm not sure. Medium height, medium build, dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner. All right. Again, how did they find out unless this dude made a call or something? I don't know how they would have found out. You know, about... There's this nice setup in the back. How they would have found out that those were Deirdre Molars. All right, so... Does that give us a new loca location? No, apparently not. Apparently we have to go to the rail yard now. So, we'll venture that way, because we can't go and add more to this case right at the moment. We'll go and start that one up. But this is the first one where two cases are kind of molding together. Everything's coming to a head. We have a problem. We could have the local troopers check out the Tulare County address. The address is bogus. The purpose having fun with us. The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. How do you figure that one? Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. The Dahlia letters are genuine. The man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Deirdre Muller. And how do we prove that, fellas? Skipper ain't gonna like this one, dude. Hmm. We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own vanity. Any central unit, four or five million suspects to be taken into custody at the trolley station on Lucas uh -oh. Avenue. Stand by for Time to do a mission. Movie turn. How far do we have to go? Let's see. Then we'll, we'll quick drive to the other location. Where are we? Hello? We're... Hidden vehicle. Where are we at right now? This is where we're going. I can't find our arrow. Call me blind. There we are. Okay, so we're there. And where... Holy crap, never mind. We're not doing that one. Sorry. Save your street crime for later. But what we will do, we're going to try something different here that I haven't tried yet. We're going to go check out a hidden vehicle. Sound like a good plan? Try for the hidden vehicle and see what's up over there. Um, but yeah, maybe the, if the killer is the same and he's using the same name and making a little slip up here, maybe we can go and catch him. I don't know. Cole is a smart dude, so I'm going to trust his instinct here. Hope we get to pursue it a little further. I'm guessing homicide is getting close to wrapping up because it seems like everything is... Pushing forward, maybe we still have one or two more cases, but then boom, hopefully we'll get some good details on the Dahlia landmark. LA Cold Storage Company. Give us some XP. Almost at rank 14 here. Alright, so I don't know what these hidden vehicles look like. Someone told me there was a Cola King car and I got instantly excited, so we gotta go check it out now, don't we? At least for a quick bit. Ah, that's not crashing anything, okay. Hidden vehicle, where are you? Across the street, alright. One of these at the gas station, I'm guessing. Is it the blue car? There's two of them, maybe it's one of these blue guys. What's up, are you hidden? You look very shiny and nice. Get in and go. All right, time to get to the crime scene now. How close are we? Oh, we're very close. So let's go to the rail yard. Is this the hidden vehicle or is it does it run back? Let's go check. Hidden vehicle, what's going on? Are you it? The hidden vehicle mark is still on the map, which is what makes me nervous here. Like, look, if we, uh... Hidden vehicle still on the map. Which is weird. What if we drive away, does the mark move? Hey, get in, Russ. Get in the car! Rusty. Let's see. We drive over here. Say we just drive this way. Now, does that mark move? No. Okay, so this isn't the hidden car. Weird. Backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up. Oh, there it is. I'm guessing that's inside. Now, how the heck are we going to get in there? Open up? Please? No. Hmm. Let's drive around inside here. Can we get in? No. <gasps> there we go. Let's go get this hidden car. Rare vehicles. Boom, baby. Ooh, look at this dirty, creepy car. 
Phantom Corsair. I like this, though. We'll drive you. We'll take you to the crime scene. Let's go. Let's give it a spin and see what it does for us. No siren, but a nice little funky horn. <laughs> Alright, so we found our hidden vehicle. And now we're just going to make our way over to the crime scene, the rail yard, and check out what's going on. This new case here. And once we get there, we'll do some more investigating. Hopefully we get another tip on the Deidre Mola ring thing. Yeah, that's a nice car. I want that one. That's a cool bus. I like that guy a lot. All right, so we have to get down. Can we crash through there? I highly doubt it. Darn it all. All right, well, we can turn off. No. Um, how are we going to get underneath? Yeah, I guess we're going to have to. So let's turn around. Turn around the Phantom. Hey, 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 sorry. The Phantom is like a ghost. It does what it wants. Whoop! We have to go down that way. Backing up again. Sorry for the crazy driving. Okay. Here we go. Down and around and under. Guessing the best way is going to be go here, make a right turn, get right to the railway. I have to do some fence crashing, but oh well. As a cop, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Bam! Let us in. Give me a break. No, you give me a break. And here we are at the rail yard. We'll wrap this episode up right here. And next time we'll investigate the mysterious railway murder. Till that time, have a fantastic day. Hit that like button if you'd be so kind. And we will see you later.